Hello, Slate Church. Happy Sunday. If you are watching on any other day of the week online, welcome. We're so glad that you're tuning in with us right now. If you don't know who I am, my name is Beth Moore, and I help to lead at our Waterloo location of Slate Church. But you may be wondering, who are the incredible ladies that I have here with me today? We wanted to take a little bit of time this Sunday to highlight one of our teams at Slate Church. And so why don't you guys introduce yourselves and let everybody know what team you guys serve on here. For sure. So my name is Victoria. Um, I'm the ministry lead for Watch Parties host team. So if you go to Watch Parties, you might see me and my team. So yeah. yeah my name is Sydney, and I serve on host team online. Online yeah. represent. <laughs> if you are watching online right now, make sure that you are typing in the chat. Sydney would obviously really love that. But you may be listening to these two right now and thinking, I didn't even know that we had host team like operating in this season. And, and what does that actually look like to, to be on a team right now? So I thought that I would just ask you guys for people that are wondering, what does it look like to be on a team right now, especially host team? And, and what was it that got you guys involved in the first place? Yeah, for sure. I think it's cool because host team is about the people and we're making sure that we're always caring for people. So there's always going to be a host team in some type of capacity. And it's cool that we actually get to do it in watch parties and online. So whatever, wherever you are, um, no matter if you're able to come in person right now or if you're just at home, you can get involved and you can get, you know, just meet people. I joined host team, I guess, over a year ago now. And people just kind of told me like, oh, just kind of start at host team and then figure out where you want to go. And I realized host team's where I wanted to stay. I love that. So um, <laughs> it's definitely a super awesome opportunity. If you love people, this is the team for you. So, so good. Yeah. It might sound cheesy, but church is wherever you are. Yeah. And it's been so great just building community throughout this season. I joined, or, sorry, I joined host team throughout COVID. I joined yeah. it, I think, last summer. So just even being able to serve throughout the season has been so, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I love that. And for you guys in this past season where things have looked a little bit different, I wonder from like the in-person perspective at watch parties and even with host team online, do either of you have any cool stories of just ways that God has moved through host team in this season? Mm -hmm. So host team is cool because it's always the first face that you will see at Slate will be someone from host. We have people outside, you know, checking you in, making sure everyone's six feet apart, all that. That's all host. So something cool is at the end of the service, people kind of stick around um, if you, for next steps. Yeah. So I kind of just hang around and hope that one of the pastors pulls me over. So that way I can get them on host team first. <laughs> so it works really well. And um, I would say that host team has grown. A lot of people, we've kind of divided to two teams right now, although we have the same purpose. We're in two teams. Yeah. But the cool thing is that that just gives us an opportunity to grow. So we have almost a whole new 1030 team. And since I've been ministry lead for a few months, and and it's just awesome seeing people, you know, in my connect group are now joining and they're forming friendships and just making a friend group, which is that so is cool. So good. I love that. What about you, Sydney? Um, I think just being able to see where church is, yeah. um, you know, being online, we're able to see, you know, so many different names and so many different, you know, where are you tuning in from today and just all over the world. It's been so incredible. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And I know you and I were talking before of yes. how cool it's been yeah. to have like practical examples of people exactly. like overseas that are yeah. tuning in. Have there been like multiple circumstances where you've been able to connect with someone that hasn't even been in Canada? Absolutely. Uh, Samson on host team online, getting to serve with him. He's serving all the way from Ghana. That's been so amazing to watch and just... Um, just seeing that grow and seeing that build has just been amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, for anyone that's wondering, like, hey, I'm listening to this right now. I want to get plugged in on host team. What are my next steps? What would that look like for them for watch parties or for online? Yeah, for sure. So if you are online um, or if you are in person, that you can go on to Slate Church and you can fill out a Connect card. So that would be the best opportunity. You can just fill that out and say just on there, hey, I want to join host, and they will get you, you in contact with me or with online. Um, if you are in watch parties or you plan on coming one week, if you see me or you see anyone on host, we have a nice little badge. Um, we no longer have blue t-shirts, unfortunately, but um, <laughs> we have a nice little badge. Just come up to us. Just tell us that you want to get involved and we'll get you. Yeah, we'll get you. in. So good. Love that. Well, thank you guys so much for being willing to chat today. Now that we have an opportunity to chat with each other in the actual chat, make sure that you are doing that. Um, as Victoria mentioned, there is also the opportunity to fill out a connect card. So as that comes up, make sure that you're filling that out. 
we want to get to know you and make sure that you get plugged in at Slate Church. But without further ado, we've got an incredible service that we're about to tune into together today. So why don't you get your heart ready for all that God is going to do. Slate Church, it's good to see you today. Hope you are doing well. If you're at a watch party, why don't you put your hands together? It's good to see your faces. I'm, cl I'm clapping, clapping for the watch parties. <laughs> That's yeah. good. And if you're online watching live or on demand on our YouTube channel, it's good to see you as well. If you're watching live on our uh, on our online page, why don't you just uh, put some emoji in yeah. the chat? Do it. We'd love to Do it. love to hear from you. Or your name. Your name could be good, too. We'd love to get to know you. On that topic, actually, there's Sorry. probably a button that's coming up here, and it says connect. If you're watching this live online, it should say connect. If you click on that, we would actually really like to get to know you. We don't want to just have another number of a person tuning in. Like, I'm sure God's going to do something cool in your life. But we'd actually like to get to know you and walk that's in right. life alongside you. So if you fill that out, that gives us an opportunity to get connected with you. So we'd love for you to do that. There's another button that's coming up, and it says invite. What's the, what's the invite button do for people? Click the invite button. It'll copy your URL so you can send it to somebody right now via a text, Instagram, whatever you want. Yep. Uh, it's an easy way to share. And because it's so easy, some of us don't do that. So let's make right. sure we're doing that. Yeah. Um, also, if you're watching right now at a watch party, you should be inviting people every week. So yeah. pull out your phone, send a text, say, hey, I'm at a watch party right now. I'd really love if you join me next week. And this is a great way to make sure that we're continuing to invite people in this season. Yeah, absolutely. But listen, we're going to start our service with a time of worship. So whether you're at home, why don't you stand to your feet? If you're at a watch party, let's stand together. We're going to worship God today. Why don't you lean into the presence of God wherever you find yourself.
church, I would just encourage you in this moment. We're gonna sing a song called New Wine. And God's been doing a new thing in our church, but I know that God can do something new in you right here, right now. So let's lift our hands in this moment. Let's lift our hands and surrender and say, God, do a new thing in me today. Whether you're at a watch party, whether you're sitting on your couch, why don't you lift your hand and start to just sing out, God, do a new thing. Oh, do a new thing here, God. Do a new thing in me. Oh, we need your Holy Spirit to do a new thing in me. Come on, we sing in the crushing. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making me mine. In the sore light, now surrender, you are breaking. Church, part of this process of Jesus bringing new wine out of us is understanding that he's the source of his spirit. This is an odd thing to be saying, but we can't actually have the spirit of God without actually asking him for the spirit of God, without actually leaning into the spirit of God. You see, this isn't just some mystical thing that, that just occurs, but it's something that we accept, something we receive, something we choose to believe in. 
And as we come to this moment of thanking God for what he's doing and asking him to continue to move in our church, my encouragement to you is to realize that the Holy Spirit is with you as you continue to become aware of him. If you've chosen Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you already have the Holy Spirit. And Emma's gonna break this down a little bit more for us today. But I wanna encourage us with some of the things that God's doing in our church right now. Somebody is thankful for the community that they found in Connect Group. I love that. Someone is thankful for an internship after a long season of waiting and praying. Someone is thankful for the financial freedom God provided by putting opportunities in their path that allowed them to pay off a lot of their debt. I love that one as well. I'm gonna read out some of the prayer requests, just a few that represent some of the ones that have come in over this past week. And if you're wondering how you can have maybe uh, the things going on in your life celebrated that God's been doing, or you have prayer requests and you're wondering how, how we can pray for them, the best way to do that is to go to our website, slatechurch.com slash prayer, and you can actually fill out an online prayer and praise card right there. And I would encourage you, don't th let this just be something you're doing personally, but allow us as a church community to come around to you and to celebrate what God's doing, as well as to pray with what's happening in your life. You know, we pray over all the prayer requests that come in every single Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. 6.30 a.m. at our prayer morning that happens over Zoom. You can join us. Everybody's willing or, or everybody's able to come uh, and join that. You can go to the same we website address that I just uh, mentioned. And you can actually join us to pray over these prayer requests. But I want to encourage you to actually submit one today and allow us to celebrate and pray with you as a church. So today we're also going to be praying just a few represented. If somebody wants their life to be Christ-centered but is experiencing doubt and shame. Absolutely, we're going to be praying about that today. Someone is praying that they would be able to experience rest and comfort in God. That's a great place to go for it. Someone else is praying that they'd be able to find a place to live and good roommates in September. Someone else is praying for someone who is having a great uh, or a, a great difficult time dealing with the changes going on in their life. Church, we're going to pray over these right now, and I encourage you to lean in with faith. If you have a prayer request of your own, why don't you just raise a hand or, or stand up or get on your knees, whatever you need to do to be in a heart posture, to be ready to receive and also to request of your Father in heaven who deeply cares about you, by the way, as we begin to pray. Jesus, we thank you for all of the praise reports that have come in over this past week. Before we even ask you for anything, we want to thank you that you are God and that you are good. Jesus, you have done so many great things in our lives. And of course, we know that if you didn't do anything else in our lives, that we have a lot to still thank you for. But even with saying that, some of us feel the pain of our current need, and we bring that to you right now. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that you would even just be ministering to our souls, that you would speak to our innermost being so that we might know that you are as close as the mention of your name. For people that are feeling lonely or wanting to draw in close to you but are, can't do so due to doubt and shame, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would cover us in the areas where we are too weak to approach you in and of ourselves. Jesus, we thank you that you are available to us any moment of the day, any uh, day of the week, any, um, any week of the month that you are there with us. And so Jesus, right now we are praying that you would come and speak to us in a still small voice, a gentle whisper or a roaring wind. However we need to hear you, may you speak to us, we pray. God, we just pray all this and lift it up to your mighty, uh, your mighty name in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, let's continue to worship.
Well, church, what an incredible, incredible time of worship. Can we just thank our worship team, no matter where you find yourself right now in the studio, watch parties, uh, online, just drop a little comment. Thank you, worship team. I keep saying this, but one of the incredible thing that's ha things that's happening in our church right now is our worship team is bringing out of the overflow of what God's doing in their own personal worship, and they're bringing it here. And you're about to actually experience a taste of that even more at the end of our service, and Emma's going to get let you in a little bit more on what that is in just a moment. Well, church, we want to continue in our worship as we talk about our giving. And for some of us, this is our favorite moment every week. And I say that because we know what it looks like to give with a cheerful heart, and we know what it means to come to this moment with a, an extreme gratitude for all that we have because God's given us it and an ability to actually turn back and give back to God. I want to encourage us out of the story of the rich young ruler found in Mark chapter 10. And I'm going to paraphrase it for us today, but a rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, hey, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus essentially gives him the Ten Commandments, if you will. And the rich young ruler says, well, all of these things I have done since I was a young man. And Jesus said, well, one thing you lack, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and then you will be saved. You see, Jesus was trying to chisel down uh, for this rich young ruler all the way down to the point where he had to realize that what Jesus was actually looking for was not the things or, or just his obedience. He was looking for surrender. He was looking for it in the innermost part where, he, he, where uh, the rich young ruler could admit to himself that he was completely surrendered to Jesus. Well, the rich young ruler, of course, we know in this story, for those of us that have read it, he walks away saddened because he had great wealth and was not able to do this. I think sometimes we actually see ourselves in this story, or we don't see ourselves in this story, rather, because we think, one, I'm not rich and I'm not a ruler. And to that, I would say, you know, we realize that for most of us watching this, if we're watching on some sort of a device, in the nation of Canada at least, you're likely in the top 4% wealthy people in the world. In fact, if you're watching on a device or uh, whatnot, or you've been to university, that sort of thing, you're probably in the top uh, percent of the most wealthy people in the world. And so we actually find ourselves in this story being confronted with, am I willing to surrender everything that I have to Jesus? Now you see, when it comes to things like giving and giving within the church, we often have the same excuses. We wanna do all of the other things for God. God, I've done this for you. I followed this commandment. I go to church every Sunday. I pray. I do all this, but, but don't ask me to sell anything. Don't ask me to give anything financially. And yet Jesus says the same thing to us, that if we really want to follow Jesus, we need to surrender it all. So when we come to this giving moment, it's actually a moment for us to remind ourselves that God is still first in our lives, that everything that we have is his, and that as we give back to him, that we actually are, are reminding ourselves of who's given us everything we have in the first place. And so today, church, this giving moment isn't for a select few. It's for all of us that would respond to the same call of Jesus 2,000 years later, to sell everything we have in our minds, to surrender it all and give back to God right now out of what he's given us. Church, we wanna thank you for all of you that have been faithfully giving. You're the ones that financially, so to speak, are making a lot happen in our church. And we wanna thank you for that continued generosity. Why don't we pray? And of course, all the ways that you can give are on the screen beside me. I think they've already probably put it on the screen uh, in front of me as well. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for who you are. And thank you for the, this opportunity to give back to you. We pray that you bless it and multiply it in your name. Amen. Well, now's a really good time to tell you about something that's coming up in our church. It's a season called Heart for the House Season. It's an incredible time for our church where uh, every single week we talk about generosity and giving. This is once a year where we give above and beyond our regular generosity. Now we did this six months ago. Usually we do it uh, in year increments, but because of COVID, we actually pushed the last one a year and a half out from when we normally would. And now we're getting back on track. Emma mentioned something about tax season. And what we're not suggesting is that you just give all of your tax return to the church. Although if that's what you're feeling, feel free. We have actually strategically placed Heart for the House around tax season every year, because while some, of, some people in our church are trained to give above and beyond their regular giving because they're planning for it all year, we also recognize that around tax season is actually a strategic time for many individuals to do that naturally, because it's an opportunity where they actually do have uh, some above, above and beyond finances sitting around. Now listen, uh, in previous years, uh, people have given large amounts. They, uh, some people have given what they had. 
uh, what we want to encourage you as you begin to pray into what you would give, what we want to encourage you is that you that we wouldn't have equal giving across our church because that's impossible, but there would be equal sacrifice going into this series. Heart for the House for us this year is not only a series where we're going to be encouraging you in giving and it's above and beyond. We're actually going to be laying out a lot of the practical vision uh, for what it looks like for, for us as a church moving forward on the heels of the This Is Church series. The This Is Church series was great um, in uh, theory and a lot of stuff that we've been talking about. We're going to talk a lot about a lot, a lot of the practical and things we're actually going to be doing over the next year in that series. So we're really, really excited about that. A few more quick things for you. This week, we have uh, Wonder Worship Nights, which is really exciting. You can sign up at slatechurch.com slash wonder, and that is on Tuesday and Wednesday night starting at 7 p.m. Make sure you register there because spots are filling up quick. They may have already filled up. I don't know, but make sure you're registering or watching live, okay? Um, secondly, we want to let you know that a week today is actually Send Off Sunday for Pastor Luke and Pastor Victoria, and we're really excited about that because uh, it's going to be an opportunity to bless them as they go off to um, uh, start ECGI, and, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we're also going to be hearing from Pastor Luke. I'm really excited about that, and I know many of you are, so make sure you tune in next week as we send them off. And finally, I want to let you know about Easter. Easter is coming up the first weekend of April. On Good Friday, we want to let you know that we're going to be having a watch party in Waterloo only at 9 a.m., uh, at 9 a.m., and then we're going to be uh, streaming it live at 9 and 10.30 on Good Friday. And then on Easter Sunday, of course, we're going to have our regular, I was about to say programming, that makes me feel really old, but uh, we're going to be doing the regular thing on Easter. Uh, we just encourage you, this is a great time of the year where a lot of people, um, maybe they grew up, uh, you know, having the traditions of Easter and Christmas. More people are susceptible, or susceptible sounds like a weird kind of way. Um, more people are open to the idea of attending church. And so this is a great opportunity to be inviting people and introducing, introducing them to the message of hope that we are all, or a lot of us at least, um, hold on to. And so uh, that's all of our announcements, I think, for today. I might have missed something. I don't know. My wife will probably add it to the beginning of her message as she comes up. But we are coming up to uh, an incredible part of our service where we get to uh, dive in deep to somebody's story within our church uh, to encourage us all. And so I want to pass it off to Pastor Jared. Hey church, well listen, we have got another phenomenal interview coming at you today, and I'm really excited for this one. I feel like I say that for all of them, but I'm genuinely excited for all of them. Looking forward to the way that this is going to impact you today, but can we put our hands together at watch parties at home and in the studio for Jenna Swirsky today? Come on, we got this guest in here. How's it going, Jenna? Going so good. Good. So, good. so you, you're actually somebody that served in our church for a while in a bunch of different capacities, but just recently have actually come on staff right. uh, running our comms team yeah. and a lot of what we see creatively and visually and all of that stuff. And so that's a really cool thing. It's been uh, a lot of fun getting to know you a little bit more as we've been working together more. It's been more. so good. We're desk buddies. We are desk buddies. <laughs> yeah, yours is right beside mine. Six feet away, obviously. Six but, feet. Um, uh, listen. You've got a, a great testimony of what God has done in your life. You grew up in a Christian home. We were talking about this. I'm sure you can touch on a ton of stuff, like, over the years and the places that God has taken you. But um, but you had something that you want to share just from this season of your life that God is teaching you that would, I think would really impact our church. Yeah, for sure. And thinking about this season of life and kind of what it's looked through or what it's kind of looked like, it's been interesting because I feel like being around the church for so long, so easy just to start to walk the walk and talk the talk yeah. and uh, really – live a life like a Christian and really looking looking good at that. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because the most significant piece of that is actually the heart posture of knowing God. Right. And it's so interesting because as I look across our church in the capital C church, you see a bunch of immature Christians coming into the faith wow. who don't actually know Jesus. Right. And it's like, I think people have learned how to how to do the right things and serve and, and, and love others. But it's like when you're not doing that in God's strength and actually right. inviting God in, what's the point of it? Yeah. We're missing the point of it. And so for me in this past season, it's been the coolest experience of just like really learning how to surrender, um, fully just inviting Jesus in daily. It's a daily thing for me. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's been cool to see the fruits of that too, the faithfulness that uh, God has had on the other side of that. Um, yeah, no, it's just been a very significant season in my own life. Yeah, L let me let me dig in a little bit deeper on what you're talking about there. Like, what what would you say is uh, that like defining difference between going through the motions of being a Christian and doing all the right things? Like, when you're talking about this idea of like um, immature Christians growing in in the church, doing all the right things, but not doing it out of the strength of the Holy Spirit in their life or God in their life, what do you, like what do you mean by that? 
Yeah, I think uh, it's easy to have the, the head knowledge, but it's actually the heart posture. Right. And it's actually, again, that idea of surrendering and just saying, like, God, in everything I do, in every conversation I have, in every every action that I do, God, let it be uh, glorifying you, that anyone who catches a glimpse of my life, God, yeah. let it be that, let, let them catch a glimpse of who you are. Um, and I think that has just been, it's really, it's given that missional focus to my life, too, of like, cool. hey, I'm not just right. living this for me. I'm not just going to church because I like the people there. No, it's right. like, oh, my God. Gosh, the, the picture's so much bigger than that. And it is really like, oh man, I just want I just want to lead people to Jesus. Right. Uh, and doing that is just through surrendering. That's great. Okay. Okay, man, we can talk about this for a long time and we don't have a long time. But listen, okay. Um, what what would you say then? Like uh, if we're turning it back to like the people that are listening to this interview, because I, I I know what it's like to be caught in that cycle of I'm doing all the right stuff, I'm going to church, I'm like in my connect group, I'm trying to let people into my right. life, like I'm doing all of those, like I'm checking all of the boxes without even knowing I'm checking the boxes. Like, what would you say to somebody like even as you've been in that experience that is looking for something deeper than just checking the boxes? Like, what's your encouragement to that person? Yeah, I would say um, run to the Father. He wants to meet with you. Um, get on your knees if you have to, but verbalize it. I think saying wow. like Jesus, come, like. And I invite you in, come into my heart. And I think it's so significant just to say it out loud. Yeah. Um, Cause it's easy to say, oh yeah, I love God. I know God. Do you know the character of God? Like, right. do you actually, are you digging into right. who God is and inviting the Holy Spirit into every moment in your day? I think that's when it switches that, wow. that switch occurs. Uh, and so, yeah, I would just say, keep leaning into it, get around the right people, keep digging in. Um, but it really is about the heart posture and not the head knowledge. It really is about inviting God in, asking him in. And I think that's where you'll kind of see that change, that crossover of just doing all the right things to actually knowing Jesus and the character of God. Yeah, wow. It's cool to hear a little bit of your story. Thank you for sharing what God's doing in your life right now. Um, it's an easy trap to fall into of just doing all the right yeah. stuff. Yeah. But actually verbalizing it, I think that's a really powerful point. And I'm excited to see how it impacts people in our church. Thanks, Jenna. But hey, listen, I'm going to pass it over to, uh, to Pastor Luke for our word of the week. But before we do that, we actually have one more announcement. We're really excited about it. We have pre-teens launching uh, this week. And so there's actually a video for that. We're going to play it for you right now. Uh, all the details are in there, but we're really looking forward to launching pre-teens in our church before the word of the week here. We are Slate Preteen, serving grade five to grade eight. Our goal is to bring a safe, consistent space where you can grow closer to God and community. We want to equip you in your relationship with God, equip you to serve the church, to share the gospel. To be an example in the way you live, in love and faith and purity, not letting others think less of you because you are young. This is what we were created for, to build a relationship with God and with others, to grow a community. <laughs> this is a place to ask questions. This is a place for being authentic, for being real, being you. We are Slate Preteens. Slate Preteens. Slate Preteens. Seeking to know God deeper. To bring His truth into our everyday lives. And love the people we encounter. And love the people we encounter. Well, hey everyone, welcome to Word of the Week. This is a segment where we break down a word that maybe you've heard before, maybe you haven't, and we talk about why it's important and how it applies to your life. And so the Word of the Week this week is the word holy. Now, I'm pretty sure that whether this is your first time in church or whether you've been going to church your entire life every Sunday, that you have said this word holy before. Maybe you've said the word holy after you stubbed your toe one time and you said holy, followed by the expletive of your choice, right? And I'm not just talking about holy moly. You know what I'm talking about. But you know what, there's so much more to the word holy than it just being an adjective that describes an expletive. There's so much more to it. In fact, uh, the word holy we read in the New Testament is actually the Greek word hagios. And this word literally means to be set apart. It means to be blameless. It means to be pure. It means to be sacred. And holiness is something that as Christians, 
we actually need to pursue. In fact, Peter writes in 1 Peter 1, verse 14 to 16, that as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Of course, we gotta recognize that holiness is not the way to Jesus, but actually Jesus is the way to holiness. And oftentimes we'll try and get this wrong and, and we think we need to just become holy based on our own strength and our own actions and, and just doing the right things all the time. And, and it becomes really legalistic, but generally that doesn't make us more holy. That just gives us an attitude of being holier than thou. We get a little self-righteous. But instead, we actually, as we pursue Jesus, as we're in relationship with him, as we become more like him, we become more holy as he is holy. We become more set apart, more pure, more morally blameless. And actually this is what allows us as Christians to live in the world, but not be of the world. To be in the world, but set apart from sin, to be able to reach the world with the light of Christ. So let's remember this week, holy, quite simply, it just means to be set apart. And we're set apart for the purpose of making the name of Jesus known. So, hey, hope that uh, is able to help you out. Right now, we are really, really excited for the message that's coming. And I just want to encourage you right now, let's get ready. Let's lean in. Let's stir up our faith for what God wants to say. Let's believe that he wants to speak to us today because he does. Whoever you are, he's got a word for you. And so right now, we are going to welcome Pastor Emma as she brings the word today. Well, hey, Slate Church, we are in the end of our This Is Church series, and I'm really excited to be bringing the word today, this final message of what I believe, and I'm sure you believe, has been just such a phenomenal uh, series, a great time just going through some different things that are foundational for who we are as Slate Church and what that looks like going forward. But I'm going to jump right in because I've got a lot to share. So I'm going to read Acts 1 verse 4. We have come back to this uh, passage over and over and over again throughout this entire series. So you should know it by now. It says on one occasion while he was eating with them, talking about Jesus, after he has risen from the dead. This is risen Jesus sitting with his disciples eating with them. What a like crazy thing to think about. He gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I also wanna take you to Acts chapter two, right at the start of that, where it says, when the day of Pentecost came, and I'll explain that in a moment, they were all together in one place. This is the believers. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wow. Why don't we pray together, church? God, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we get to come together. We get to worship you. And Lord, I pray right now that uh, lives would really be transformed through this message, God. I pray you would use me to speak powerfully in your name. We pray, amen. 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 Well, if you're taking notes today, you can entitle this message, Filled Up filled up. And I am talking all about the Holy Spirit, all right? And you might be like, okay, like you might have some different ideas that come up when you hear about the Holy Spirit. We talk about the Holy Spirit a lot at church. We talk about the Holy Spirit when we pray. We talk about the Holy Spirit and, and we might know a little bit about the Holy Spirit, right? There's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. We know the Holy Spirit can be our comforter. We know that the Holy Spirit can bring us peace, that there's fruit that comes from having the Holy Spirit in our lives. Maybe you recognize that when you become a Christian, you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you have this power in you and that is so great. We use this language. You might also have some ideas about the Holy Spirit and you go, okay, 
I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I can I can rationalize things with Christianity. I can kind of I kind of got the Bible. I can read that. I've got a little bit of the narrative there. But when it comes to the spiritual realm, like that sounds a little bit spooky. Like that's the, I'm not too sure. That's where things can get a little bit weird. I'm not sure if I want to go too deep into that because that just mm, that's that seems like something that's not quite as accessible to me. Maybe you've thought about this before. Maybe you know that different uh, different groups of Christianity, different denominations, different churches kind of interpret and, and look at the Holy Spirit differently. You have some people who really don't take into consideration at all the Holy Spirit, right? It's just, what did Jesus say? What does the scripture say? We're just going to ignore the Holy Spirit altogether. There's other Christians who maybe look at the Holy Spirit and say, okay, you know you have the Holy Spirit if you behave a certain way or you do certain things or you, you know then you have the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have more of the Holy Spirit if you do these certain things and and there's some confusion, and there, there's people all across that spectrum of what does it mean to, to access, to be aware of, to work out of the Holy Spirit. And today, I want to go to Scripture and say, what, what does Scripture say? What are we looking at here? So I want to give you a little bit of context of what we read from Acts chapter 2. You see, they're talking about the day of Pentecost. And this is what we know now uh, of what the Jewish tradition would have been, the Jewish festival would have been called the day of weeks or the day of harvest. And this actually took place 50 days after Passover. So Passover was another Jewish festival. And actually on Passover is when Jesus died. It's what we know as Easter today, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. And we know it's about 50 days later. And we know it's over this time because Jesus ascended into heaven right after what we just read in Acts chapter 1. And we know that was 40 days after he died on the cross. And this is 10 days later. So we know we've got 50 days here. And the, the the believers are gathering in this upper room. They're gathering in this house together. They're probably like, what is actually going on here? Jesus just told us, don't leave Jerusalem. So we're in Jerusalem. Then he told us the spirit will come upon you. And what's going on? Like there's no spirit here. I don't, I don't know what's happening. But then what we see happen is this pretty crazy thing. It says, suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Like this is like freak freaky stuff, right? Like you're like, okay, this noise, what's going on? They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. I don't even know what that would look like that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. What we have here is the first filling of the Holy Spirit after Jesus had ascended into heaven. This marks the transition from the old covenant, the law, this, this legalistic understanding of how you can have access to God, to this new covenant, the fulfillment of Jesus coming and dying on the cross, rising again, ascending into heaven, and now the Holy Spirit has come. We see the fulfillment and the start of the New Testament take place here, the new covenant take place here. And this is a pretty wild experience that happens. Wild enough that people come running from all over to see what the heck was that noise? What is going on here? And after we see the Holy Spirit come, what we see is Peter stand up and all of a sudden start preaching to crowds of people. He starts to, to bring this message and he says, repent and turn and come to Jesus. And it says the people do. And the Spirit falls upon them and the Spirit fills them. And you know, this is what happens when we actually become Christians. When we say, hey, I believe that Jesus died and rose again. I pray that you would take my sins away. I'm going to trust in you, Jesus. When you do that, when you make that decision, there is actually a spiritual thing that is happening where you become filled with the Holy Spirit. You are full of his power. You are full of his ability. You are full of his peace. You can access that. Anymore. You are totally full. But what does it mean then when we read in the New Testament, when we read in the Bible, where people seem to have this filling of the Holy Spirit that takes place after they already believe, right? This, this, this further filling of the Spirit. And you're going, okay, listen, if something's full, it's full, right? If you think of a water glass and it's full of water, it's full of water. So what in the world is Paul talking about? What are these writers of Scripture talking about when they say, and then he was filled with the Spirit and went and did this. And then they were filled with the Spirit and went and did that. I think an important analogy, I'm going to attempt this. I tried to blow this up just before I, I started preaching, and I, I was unsuccessful. So here we go. Just bear with me here. All right. Blew this up a little bit here. I think it's fair to say, if we look at this balloon, that it is full of air. I think it's fair to say that this is still full of air. 
but it is now expanded and we could say that 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 it has been filled even further it's still a balloon it's still full of air but there's been an expansion that has taken place that there's more air within it all right i'm gonna get get rid of that Another example I was thinking about when it comes to the Holy Spirit, this filling of the Holy Spirit, is the idea of someone who becomes pregnant. When a woman becomes pregnant, the moment of conception, she is fully pregnant. She doesn't become more pregnant as the pregnancy goes on. It doesn't become, it doesn't change in and of herself. But as she expands and grows, as the baby grows within her, there's this expansion that takes place. There is perhaps a greater filling that takes place. The same thing is true for us as Christians. When we go into spiritual practices, when we engage in reading our scripture, when we engage in worship, when we engage in tithing, when we engage in prayer, there's an expansion that takes place. And we can notice, maybe you've experienced this, where all of a sudden you're reading scripture and the Bible is just coming alive to you. And you're like, what is going on here? That is the Holy Spirit working in you, giving you fresh eyes to see what that looks like. Maybe even worshiping and you just feel this sense over you, right? It's almost hard to explain where you're just like there is a peace or there is a power here. Or there, is, there is conviction here. That is the Holy Spirit filling you afresh. And we get filled up for different things. You see, church, I believe that we are in a season of expansion. We have been talking about uh, this, this is church idea. We've been getting real about what church is. We've been talking about discipleship becoming disciples. We've been talking about reaching people. We've talked about commitment and actually being committed and planted in this house. We are seeking revival, which is just simply a move of God. We're seeking more of Jesus. We're seeking people who are far from God coming into relationship with him. But right now we cannot stand back. We cannot sit by. We cannot become introspective or prideful. We can't look at our needs as being the most important. We don't have time for criticism or complaining or a lack of commitment or a focus on self. If we are so focused on ourselves, our humanity, we are going to miss out on what the Spirit wants to do in us. You know, I believe that this is actually a bit of a stake in the ground Sunday. As we wrap up our This Is Church series, you may be going, I've never really thought too much of the Holy Spirit. Like, isn't that kind of for charismatic people? You might throw that word onto it. That like, isn't that that kind of weird stuff that happens where everything's chaotic and out of control and people are doing funny things? And I'm not sure exactly how to phrase that, but I'm just going to stay away from that. <laughs> you know, it is important to look at Scripture and say, what actually happens when we see a filling of the Holy Spirit. What do we actually see going on? And the first thing is this, we can see that people notice. People notice. You see, the believers are up in this room. Jesus has ascended to heaven. They're going, what now? And bam, Acts 2, there's a sound from heaven. There's a roaring windstorm. It fills it. There's these tongues of fire and it rests on them and they start speaking in other tongues. They are actually speaking in languages of other people. And the crowds gather around. They've heard the storm. They're going, what is going on? You see, the crowds that gather around are Jewish people that are in Jerusalem. They're gathered for this festival that we talked about. This is an international conference, okay? This is an international festival where there are Jews from every area and every place. And they come and they go, what is going on? They are talking. The la These men are from Galilee, are they not? Like, they're speaking my language. How is this happening? And then we have other people who take notice and they, they're critical about it. And they're critical about what's going on. But all of these people are curious. And when curiosity is met with truth, there's actually an opportunity for life change to take place. But you know what I find fascinating about this? And this is so encouraging for us, church, is that these people who gathered around, these crowds that Peter would preach to, they were not interested in Jesus. These were not people that were like, yeah, I might check out church. You know, I might come, I've been invited a few times, I might come and check it out, or maybe I'm just curious and I'll watch a message online or, or whatever. These people were like devout Jews. These people were from a fully different religion than the, the, this Jesus way, this Jesus movement that was taking place. It says in Acts 2 verse 5, at the time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. These were not just people that were kind of willy-nilly when it came to their faith. These were devout Jews. They were not about to change their religion. They were not curious. They were not necessarily open when they came for this festival. They were not searching. Some of these people even thought that, that the, the disciples were just drunk. But in Acts 2, chapter 41, after Peter has stood and he has preached and he has proclaimed the good news of Jesus, we see this. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized 
and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. 3,000 of those people. You see, when the Holy Spirit fills up believers, people take notice. And it's not just people who are already curious. We're talking about people from all over, people from different religions, people that you would think would never be interested in this message of Jesus. Where you're going, I can't talk to that coworker because that person's Muslim. I can't talk to that person over there because they live a lifestyle that just doesn't fit within the church at all. I can't, that person's an atheist. There's no way I can have that conversation. When the Holy Spirit fills you, it changes how you communicate. It changes what happens. People take notice and they hear clearly because they become curious. And when curiosity is met with truth, anything can happen. If this doesn't give you hope, I don't know what will. The second thing that happens is that there is power. When the Holy Spirit comes, there is power. We first see this with Jesus. In Matthew 3, 16, as Jesus was baptized with water, he came up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was open. I wish I was there to see this. Heaven was open and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him. Jesus was empowered by the spirit for the ministry that he was doing. We see this in Acts, but you will receive power, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria and the ends of the earth. You see, he's not just talking about them as individuals. He is talking about the outworking of the local church. He is talking about the start of the local church that is infused, that is filled with the spirit of God. Without the spirit, the church is pointless. Without the spirit, what are we doing here? Without the spirit, there is no power. When we try to do it in and of ourselves, we grow weary and we get tired and we get worn out and we're burned out and we're just just so sick of it. But when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, anything is possible. You see, we actually see this happen. There's an infilling of the Holy Spirit after Jesus ascends and the Spirit falls. And Peter, the same guy who not that long before is standing by a fire and saying, I don't know Jesus. Like, there's no way I know Jesus. Like, don't don't associate me with Jesus. Is the same man that is standing in front of crowds of thousands of people. This is not like 50 people were like, what was that noise? Like, we're talking thousands of people coming around. Jesus is, or, or Peter is empowered by the Spirit. It is not that Peter is all of a sudden some eloquent speaker. It is not that Peter all of a sudden has all of this ability or all of this power in and of himself. Something changed when the Spirit filled him and fell upon him and he was able to preach with clarity. He was able to preach. uh, He was able to refer to different areas of scripture. He was able to to talk about prophecy. He was able to bring these things forward and 3,000 people were added that day and thousands continued to be added and the church continued to expand. We see this over and over again. We see this with Paul. When the Spirit came upon him, when he had an acknowledgement, everything changed. There was power. There was endurance. There was ability. It didn't matter that he was maybe humble in speech. It didn't matter because the Spirit filled him. And the same is true for us, that we receive power. You might feel so weak. Great. The Spirit can use you. You might feel so uneducated. Great. The Spirit can use you. You might feel so afraid of people. You might deal with so much anxiety. You might feel like you can't get out of bed in the morning. You might feel like you have screwed up so many times over and over again. Great, the Spirit can use you. Are you open today to receive and become more aware and expand so that you can acknowledge and recognize the work of the Spirit in you? The third thing is that when the Spirit falls, there are necessary gifts that we start to see manifested, that we start to see come out. And church, we need to be operating in the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to fly. 1 Corinthians 12, here are some of the gifts um, that we see given with the Spirit. There's wisdom, there's knowledge, there's faith. There are gifts of healing. There are gifts of miraculous power. He gives gifts of prophecy, uh, distinguishing between spirits, another of speaking in different tongues. And all of these work together in the same Spirit, just as he determines. Paul goes on then to talk about one body, many parts, and how we all make up these different parts. And he he then talks about, hey, we don't all have these same gifts, but we need to seek these gifts. We need to search out these gifts. We need to ask for these gifts. We need to look for them. And church, we need to do the same today. 
We need to acknowledge that if we are going to see re revival, if we are going to see life change, if we are going to see a move of God, that he wants to use each and every one of us because each and every one of us has different gifts as the Spirit chooses. We need to pray for these. We need to seek them out. We need to operate in them. We need to try it out. We need to see what's going on with it. But listen, we cannot abuse the Holy Spirit by saying, yes, God told me to do, go and do this. Let's, let's be clear here. This is not a go out and do your own thing sort of thing. We're one body here. The Spirit unifies. If you are talking about God in a way that divides, it's probably not the Holy Spirit that is telling you to do it. It's probably your own flesh that's telling you to do that. But we need to operate out of these gifts, even if they feel spooky or foreign or uncertain or, or any of those things. Let's just start setting aside our humanity and putting God in our box and start stepping into the Spirit's power. There can be this feeling of, why aren't we seeing this today? Is there a withholding of the Spirit? Was it just for then? But I believe it's not. You know, we're about to sing a song after I close here that we actually, was, it was actually written within our house. It's actually a song that's original to Slate Church. And listen, we're not about to release an album. That's not what we're doing here. What we're doing is we are taking what God is speaking right now to our house and we are proclaiming it. We are worshiping in it. We are worshiping out of the spirit with it. And it's called Revival Rumblings. And you know, I believe, church, that right now, Brandon and I have been talking, we've been working out vision. We've been sensing that the spirit is doing something here that there is an expansion going on, that there are revival rumblings happen, happening. And you know, as I was preparing for this message, and I know I'm about to go a couple minutes over, as I was preparing for this message, I really just felt, and here, here is me right now operating out of a gift of the Spirit, out of a prophetic gift of the Spirit. So you can actually witness it right now. I just felt the Spirit of God say, and it dro dropped this picture in my mind. And I said earlier about this pregnancy, right? That, that when you're pregnant, there's this expansion that takes place and the Holy Spirit expands. And I really believe, church, that we are actually in a season of pregnancy as a church. That there is something growing within this church. That there is something expanding within the church. And we need the power of the Spirit to expand with us and to grow with us and to develop with us. And I really felt like God was saying to me, but after the pregnancy expands and after the pregnancy, there is delivery. And I believe right now, church, that God wants to, uh, out of this season that we're in, that something is going to be delivered, that we are going to see a birthing process take place out of Slate Church. And it is an exciting time, and it is a great time, but I'm telling you right now that we cannot do that in our own power. If we are leaning on our own power, if we are just believing that we're just going to be able to figure this out, if we just lean on our own talents and abilities and skills and leadership and commitment and all of those things, we are not going to deliver with strength. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit, church. And that takes every one of us getting real, surrendering, being open to the work of the Spirit, asking to be expanded, seeking, looking, knocking, reaching, reading, praising with abandon. Who the heck cares if your hand is raised? Who the heck cares if you are praying and you're going, I don't know if I should. Just start to operate out of these gifts. Start to seek out and you will see that expansion take place in your life. And I believe it is going to take place with throughout this church. And we are going to see revival birthed out of this time of seeking God and waiting. But let me tell you, as we see this, we are going to see breakthrough. We're going to see breakthrough in families. We're going to see breakthrough in marriages on the verge of divorce. Maybe you're on the other side of the screen wondering about that right now. We're going to see breakthroughs in infertility. We're going to see breakthroughs in healing. We are going to see, people are going to go, what's going on over there? Because the Holy Spirit is at work here and we are having health like no other. And we are having miracles take place. And we are having prophetic uh, vision come forward. And, and people are going, what is happening over at Slate Church? But I'm telling you, this is not the end point. When we start to see those things, we are seeing them. But as we continue to see them, that is just the starting point, church. But I wonder, are you on board? Are you going to stand up and say, hey, I need to be discipled. I want to disciple other people. I want to commit. I want to lean in. I am here. I am rooted. I am planted and I am open to the work of the spirit, whatever that looks like. Jesus baptized, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will receive power when he comes upon you. 
We are spirit filled already, but we can seek out more filling. And church, I want to personally invite you right now to our worship nights coming up this week. I just believe right now that there is going to be a pouring out of the spirit. It can happen now as we worship, as we go into this in just a second. But I believe that there is something that is going to shift in the atmosphere of Slate Church. It's not emotions. It's not working up. It's not goosebumps. It's not, it is the Holy Spirit. And I'm believing that you need to be in the room or you need to be watching live. You need to set the time aside, whatever it takes. Don't let wearing a mask throw you off from a move of the spirit. Let's go, church. We need you to lean in. And I want to invite you to that. Listen, if you are watching and you're saying, I need this in my life, I want to believe in Jesus, it's very simple. It's just a prayer. It's just a statement of, I believe in him. You can click that in the chat or if you're at watch parties, why don't you just raise your hand to show that you want to accept him right now and I'm going to pray for you. Jesus, I pray right now for every person making a decision to follow you and Holy Spirit as you fill them right now, God, I pray you would forgive our sins, Lord. I pray that we would be able to acknowledge your death and resurrection. And I thank you that we get to spend eternity with you, Lord. And we get to outwork our lives with your spirit in us. We thank you for this in your name. Amen. And listen, we're going to go to worship right now. And I'm not even going to pray again because I believe this prayer is actually going to be all of us declaring it in this song, Revival Rumblings. Make this your prayer today, your individual prayer. We're believing for great things, church. Love you. We'll see you this week.
to be the one that ends that moment. What a powerful, powerful song that has come out of our worship team. We want to thank everybody involved in, in, uh, in writing and, uh, and coming up with the instrumental behind and everything else. Uh, as Emma already mentioned, this is a song from our house for our house. We're not releasing it out to the world. It's not meant for anybody but us in this season because we really just want to sing about what God is doing in our church. We want to sing about what he's up to and and this is a song we're going to be singing more because it's so significant in what God's doing in our church right now. So uh, that was just amazing worship team. And can we also give it up for Pastor Emma and that incredible message that she just gave here in the studio. Give it up to her at watch parties everywhere else. Um, what a way to close out the This Is Church series. I honestly don't want it to end. When we said it was going to be seven or eight weeks long, I thought like, man, this is going to be the longest series ever. But God really showed up in the midst of the series, didn't he? And um, it's not over because the heart of everything that we've um, been taught during the season is going to come with us. And we're going to do all those things that Emma uh, uh, shared with us tonight. Well, I want to encourage you, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, to fill out a connect card at slatechurch.com slash connect. Somebody will follow up with you. Um, if you're just new to Slate Church, you want to know how to get involved, or you want to know more, fill out a connect card at slatechurch.com. And you can go scroll to the bottom and fill out an online connect card. We'd also like to invite you to next steps. Uh, if you're watching at a watch party, somebody in just a moment is going to give you more information. But if you're watching right now live on our online platform, you can actually click the link that's about to pop up in the chat. Follow it there. And there's going to be some great people there to welcome you. It's a Zoom call. It's not too crazy. Nobody's going to grill you. But it's an opportunity for you to learn what your next step could be. And also a chance for you to hear a little bit more vision here at Slate Church. There's so many great things happening. You can follow us on all of these, all of these social media handles we now have. Uh, you can join us for Wonder Worship Night. And uh, everybody is like going crazy. Great. And also, we are launching Slate Preteens this week. And uh, we know that all of all of you that are preteens, you're so excited. And I mean, we're launching Slate Preteens. I don't like being called a preteen, but you know, you know that's gonna be great. And we'd love to see you there. Church! This is church. What an incredible series. Wherever you find yourself, why don't we just celebrate all that God did in the This Is Church series. What a crazy, crazy time for us. And more is to come with the, the, with the Heart for the House series. And next week, send off Sunday with Pastor Luke and Victoria. 
We absolutely love them, and we're going to send them off really well. Church, we'll see you throughout the week, and we'll see you next week.